All right. Well, happy Wednesday, ladies. Thank you guys for coming today. Um, I really appreciate you guys always showing up. I know I say that a lot, but I just, it, it just really like is pretty awesome to come and talk to you guys every day. And to kickstart my day like this and, ooh, Brittany, sorry, that caught my attention. I didn't realize your shirt was like a little cut off. That is sexy, mama. <laughs> woo, woo, I love it. Do your thing, girl. I love it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, so I do have some fun stuff for us today. Um, I have some interesting information, you guys, that I have recently learned and I just feel like I would be robbing you guys of information if I didn't tell you about it. So um, it has opened my own eyes. So this is something I'm learning as well. And it's something that I'm gonna have to like really mentally flip um, because it's something I realize that I'm doing that is hindering people, okay? Um, it's interesting. So I have, okay, so um, Elika and I, um, like back in October, we decided to read a book together and work through a book. And then after that, we just kind of were like, well, what's the next book? And what's the next book? And we just keep reading books together. And then we'll just like come and talk about them chapter by chapter um, every once in a while. If you guys are ever interested in doing something like that, let me know. I'd be totally down to do like a book study with you guys. Um, basically, I just read, just read a little bit at a time because, um, you know, our schedules are busy. And so we'll just be like, hey, like seven or eight pages at a time. We come on Monday, we'll talk about it. We kind of check in on our teams and then that's about it. So it's kind of cool, something that I've started doing with her. And um, it kind of came out of nowhere, to be honest. And then we just continue doing it. And so over time, we're just like, oh, let's try this book. Let's try this book. And she actually hooked me up with this book that I probably would have never picked up had I just been, you know, frolicking, looking for personal development or business development or something like that. It's, it's, um, it's nothing I would have picked up. So it's pretty cool to kind of get recommendations from other people sometimes when they say like, hey, you should try this book. Try it. Okay. Because you never know what kind of information could be in that book that you could perceive that you would have never received had you not read that book. Um, and that's the thing about personal development, you guys. It's like, just when you think you know it, you haven't even begun. There's so much more to know. So it's like, right when you think that your brain is like, you're like, there's times where I'm like, oh my gosh, like I've listened to this personal development before. I've read that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. I've heard that. And then every once in a while, something will come along that you're kind of like, holy crap, how have I been living my whole life not knowing that piece of information? And had you never experienced a certain book or the certain video or a certain something, you would have never known. And so I always like to take people's recommendations. I like, cause you never know kind of what their reasoning is behind it of why they're recommending it. And so I always go for it or at least jot it down and maybe we'll read it later or something like that. Or somebody's like, Oh, you would love so-and-so. Like I always try to jot them down and look them up later. Um, you never know, right? So the book that she got for me is um, right here. And it is called The Yamas and the Niyamas. And, and it's exploring yoga's ethical practice. And what this is, is it's basically like yoga, uh, the sense of yoga, not necessarily even just like the flowing yoga that we do, but the sense of yoga is its own practice okay so yoga in itself is a practice and it has certain like rules <laughs> you could say rules like like a ten commandments kind of style um if you needed something to kind of reference it off of um the, it has its own sense of what to do and what not to do how to live how to function how to treat people and basically that's what this is all about and so it's it's very interesting and so there's um the yamas and the niyamas which they're different kinds of rules of how to live your life and i'm only in chapter two okay so um 
I'm only in chapter two and I've already learned so much, like literally so much to where I was just like, holy crap, how have I not known this in my life? Where has this been? Why have I been functioning at such a, like, I don't know what kind of level it is. Like, I just, I'm, I, this information is like really dear to my heart. I'm really enjoying it already. And I'm only on chapter two and to where I'm already wanting to share a section of the book with you guys. Um, so just know that I'm learning this as well. And this was definitely something that came as a surprise to me. So the, um, basically what it is is like the first one, which is what I'm going to talk to you guys about. The first one ah, is nonviolence. Okay, so the first one is being nonviolent. And what it means really is not necessarily like always physical. Like, of course, you don't want to physically ever hurt anybody, right? But how can we be nonviolent to other people with our speech, with our uh, words or uh, our actions or the way we treat people? But also, it goes into a sense of how we treat ourselves of how nonviolence needs to be treat like a treatment that we treat everybody equally, ourselves included, right? Like how violent can we get with ourselves, especially with our own words and things like that. And so it's really teaching me <laughs> um, the act of violence and how violence can be all different kinds, you guys. Like violence can be so detrimental to our mindsets to our world to our people around us like and and it really just comes down to like being kind um and being patient but i found this section and i'm hoping that maybe it'll mean um as much to you guys as it did to me because it was very eye-opening to me when i read this part so um basically i in oh no 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 hi why would you need my phone when you have a tablet? Because I'm bored. You have your tablet. I'm my tablet's bored. Your tablet's bored? Yeah, because I like your phone better with the X. Okay, well, I'm not running on a hotspot, so go ahead. So that's why I work in the next. Scoop. <laughs> All right. I don't know why, but isn't that funny? He has a tablet and it's like the same stuff on my phone, but my phone is so much cooler. <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So in this part, I, I found this part of the book to be very eye-opening to me. It was something that I just not noticed before. Um, I, a lot of the other things in it, I was kind of like, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And, but this part, I was like, holy crap. I didn't realize how much that was like really hurting people. And um, so I'm gonna read it, but I just thought Ella could jump on. Ella, I just wanna let you know, I'm reading <laughs> some of um, our book, The Yamas and the Niyamas. I'm reading about worrying, just so you know. Okay, she'll know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nicole, I just read that comment over here. That's hilarious. That is exactly they're like, I just want to touch it <laughs> all the time. <sighs> but okay. So this section, let me actually kind of line you up with where this chapter is or this little section of the book is, and then we'll kind of talk about it and discuss it. So they're talking about nonviolence. So acts of nonviolence. And then what I'm gonna talk to you about is about worrying. Okay, and then um, there's a little part here that I want to read and I'll kind of explain it. Let me just start reading and I think you guys will understand. Nellie Morton, a feminist writer in the 1970s, spoke eloquently about the power we have to hear each other into being. Rachel Naomi Raymond echoes our listening creatures, a sanctuary, for a homeless part within another. This is nothing to fix or save in another. There is only the gift of listening. There is only the gift of listening, okay? 
People need a safe place to hear themselves, to return to the monkey and the fish story, which I'll explain to you guys. All we have to offer in the end is to get into the water with those in need, not to bring them in the trees with us. And so earlier in the book, there was this part where um, there's a fish in the water and there's a monkey in the trees. And the monkey jumps down, grabs the fish and pulls him up into the trees and says, oh goodness, you almost drowned. And the fish goes, what? <laughs> and because ideally, right, the monkey actually just took him out of the water thinking he was saving him, right? But in reality, he was pulling him out of the only thing that actually let him live, which was the water. And so a lot of times, you guys, I'm realizing that we think we're helping people, right? We think that we're helping people, but in that reality, we're enabling them, right? Or we're pulling them out of a situation that they must experience in order to become who they're supposed to become. We constantly want to save people, right? Oh, let me help you. Let me save you. And we're constantly trying to save people when in reality, sometimes we need to let them sit there and swim and figure it out for themselves. So that's a little part that I thought was really interesting, but here's the part that I really want to work into, okay? Worry is another way violence gets masked as caring. Worrying, oh my gosh, you guys are gonna to wanna to write this down, okay? Worrying is a lack of faith in the other and cannot exist simultaneously with love, okay? I'm gonna read that again. Worrying is a lack of faith in the other and cannot exist simultaneously with love, okay? Either we have faith in the other person to do their best or we don't. Worry says, I don't trust you to do life right. Worry comes from a place of arrogance that I know better what should be happening in your life. Worry says, I don't trust your journey or your answers or your timing. Worry is fear that hasn't grown up yet. It is a misuse of our imagination. We both devalue and insult others when we worry about them. Woo! Do I need to read that again? Because you guys, it's so freaking important, okay? Um, I didn't realize that worrying about somebody was devaluing them. When you worry about somebody, you're saying, I don't trust you're gonna make the right decision. Ouch, right? Like how, and the thing is though, it's, so Ellie and I kind of already talked through all of this on Monday and I went through like this whole like big circle of like figuring all this out. So now I'm kind of sharing it with you guys. Um, you guys, I didn't realize that by worrying about somebody that I was actually discrediting them. We thought we were caring, right? Like, oh, I'm worried for you. Are you doing okay? I'm worried. When in reality, and not that it's perceived, like if somebody said, oh, I'm worried about you, I'd be like, oh, don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. I wouldn't be offended if somebody was worrying about me, but now I get it. Now that it's been exposed that I actually worry means they don't trust me. They don't trust that I can handle this. They don't trust that I can get through this. So how many times have you worried about somebody and said, I'm worried for you. And in reality, all you're doing is saying, I don't trust you can make good decisions up for your life. How interesting is that? Like, is that eye-opening to you guys? It was very eye-opening to me to realize that my worry for somebody was basically saying, I don't think that you're making the right decisions. And, and how can somebody say that they, um, I don't know, it's just, it's interesting to me and I'm still trying to work through it, okay? So I'm still trying to like 
switch my brain from realizing that worrying is not not only is it harmful to me like we all know that oh don't worry don't worry it's just harmful for the person worrying but it does more harm on the person that you're worrying about right um so i thought that was very interesting you guys and i think that's information that absolutely needed to be shared um because wow I don't know. It just was very eye-opening to me, and I just really wanted to share it with you guys as well. And um, and there was like just so much information in that like one little paragraph that I was like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> I was like, "Who knew that worrying was was such a negative for the other person?" And like almost like the underlying information, you know? Like of course, worrying isn't good for you you know, like, cause it will stress you out and all of that stuff. But little did I know how undermining worrying is, right? Like you're undermining the person that's sitting in front of you as if they can't handle their life. And, and so when we kind of step back and say, okay, I'm not going to worry about you. Maybe I'm going to pray for you. You can say that I'm going to pray for you or how can I get in the water and just sit with you? Instead of trying to take you out of water and pull you up in the trees where I am saying, come on, I know better for you, so come on. I know better, so come on, come up, to, come up the tree with me. But little did you know that that fish had to stay in the water. You didn't need to worry about him. You didn't need to save him. He's meant to be in the freaking water. Let him swim through his own water. Let people swim through their own water. You don't have to save them. You don't have to worry about them. You need to support them and say, you know what? I actually think you're really capable of doing that. Yeah, Carly. And it, it kind of makes sense because you think about like, people have to learn, like they keep you can't, you can give someone support, but they just have to learn to work through it themselves too. Like we can give them all the tools we can give them, but like, like I just keep thinking about like crappy boyfriends we've all had, you know, like we have all these bad relationships and it's like, you just, you eventually learn, you know, I know I did. So it's yep. like, that's how I'm kind of connecting this too. Like you support people, we are there for them, but you just have to eventually work through it yourself. Yep, I 100% agree with that. Like, and I even think of it as like an addict, you know? Um, you could sit there and enable and enable and enable an addict, but they're never going to get out of it if you don't just say, you know what, you made your bed and you're going to have to lie in it too. Figure it out. Clean your life up and we'll talk when you're, when, when you're done, you know? Um, and that's, you know, kind of an interesting situation. So um, Mike and I were watching Outer Banks. Have you guys have been into that just yet? Um, it's on Netflix. We got the first season, Outer Banks up. We binge watched like six episodes last night. <laughs> Not really usually my style, but God, we just couldn't help it. We just kept pressing play on the next episode. But there's this part where one of the sons is, you know, doing a little too many uh, party, partying days. <laughs> and he starts getting in a little bit of trouble. And the dad has to kind of go and ends up paying his, like, little drug person, you know. And, and the guy even says to the dad, like, oh, you're showing up to pay his debts, like, uh, like almost just kind of like calling him out for like enabling his son, right? And so the dad like beats the crap out of the drug king, but then he actually goes back and also kicks his son out of the house, which I was surprised at because in a no in normal, I feel like he would take him home and let's get you help and let's get you through rehab and you know what I mean, like kind of um, coddles, but he was just like, get out. Like, you're out. I paid your debt, but you're out. Go figure your shit out. And I was just like, yeah, dad. Yeah. Like, you know, like kind of was just like made him 
yes, I'm going to make sure you're okay and protected and covered, but we're done. That was it. That's all you got was my one time and then you're out. You need to go figure your own shit out. And I was just like, that's, I mean, I know it's like tough as a parent. I could only imagine how hard that would be like saying that to my son or anything like that. But now that you know, worrying and saving them is not going to do anything. It's just going to prolong the experience. It's just going to prolong the, the cycle, you know, and maybe they need to hit rock bottom and that's going to be really hard to watch. Right. Um, but it also might save their life. You never know. You never know. Um, and so I just thought this was like really interesting information because I had never looked at worrying as an issue other than the fact that they say, oh, we're, don't worry, you know, it would just fester your mind. Like the way people always explain worrying as a negative thing, it was like, I know, um, you know, and I would be like, I know I'm not supposed to worry, but I do anyway. You know, um, that's kind of how we always answered it and stuff like that. Like it was, it was just for me, I worry because it's just, I'm a mom, you know, but in reality, as a mom, when you're worrying about your kids, why don't you trust their decision-making? You've raised them, right? Right. You've taught them right and wrong. Why are you so worried? Do you think they'll make the wrong decision? Probably, they probably will, but they have to learn about life. They have to learn, they have to go through the trenches. They have to go and get a little icky and you can be there in the water with them saying, I know, I know, it's hard, but you're strong and you're capable of doing hard things and you're capable of working through this. I believe it. Like, what if we just had faith that the people around us can figure it out? Right? Um, and then it, it kind of even goes on, like, how uh, this book even kind of goes on the difference between help and support. Okay? Helping is like doing stuff for people. Right? Like, just straight up doing something for them. Support, like, I think you're capable of getting through that. I think you're capable of handling that. But, but you're going to have to go through it. I'm sorry. I can't do it for you. I can't save you. You have to experience it. You have to go through it. And I'm not going to worry about you while you're doing it. I'm going to trust that you have the tools and the ability to get through it. I know that's hard, right? Like I know like even just saying that, even just thinking of me doing that in the future, it like, it feels a little impossible. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it feels a little like, oh my God, I'm just gonna have to like let go, like legit let go of things I cannot control and that have nothing to do with me as a, me. You know what I mean? Like that's you. And I think that's where, like moms kind of struggle a lot because it's like, you know, we're supposed to be taking care of our babies and all this stuff, but we're not supposed to be protecting them from the world, you guys. That's not our job. We're supposed to be preparing them for the world. Okay. So we don't have to put them in a bubble and guard them and say, oh, I don't want you to get hurt. You're so perfect. You're so precious. That's not our job. Our job is to say, you know what? You're probably going to fall down and get some bumps and bruises, but it'll give you a little character and give you a story to tell later on. But I think you're capable of figuring it out because you're part of me. You're part of me and I know I'm pretty resilient. And so I know sure as hell you're probably pretty resilient too. And you'll figure it out because I figured it out. Your dad figured it out or we're figuring it out or we're, you know, figuring it out as we go, because just when you think you have it all figured out, life will throw you this crazy curveball, right? <laughs> and you'll be like, what? I'm not ready for that. Um, but that's going to be life, you know? And the more that we just accept that, the more our kids are going to learn to accept that, the more that 
we can worry less and understand that, hey, I've, I've, I've provided you all the tools that you needed to get through life. And you know what? Here's the deal, you guys. Uh, Mike was provided about a third of the tools to get through life. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys know much about Mike. Mike was in and out of foster care quite a bit. Um, his mom would just like drop him off at group homes and leave him for like months at a time. No contact, no nothing. Um, and Mike and I are at the same place. We've still found each other. We, do you, you see like where I had a pretty good life and he had a pretty bad life, but still somewhere in life, we ended up at the same spot in the same place doing the same thing. Isn't that crazy? When you think of that, like somebody who had a life like this, and somebody who had a life like this can still meet somewhere in the middle. You know? So even if you don't give all your kids the tools they need, they will probably find it along the way. Right? Regardless of how they have to find out, maybe it's the hard way, maybe it's the easy way, who knows? They're going to find out though. Mike figured it out. And he didn't have the perfect mom to tell him everything that he needed to know. And he figured it out. He may have had to learn everything not to do, <laughs> which then gave him all the right things of how to do things, you know? Um, but it's interesting to be like, wow, his mom barely took care of him and he still figured it out. Or my mom, who probably did everything for me, I love my mom, but she was like always there, always helping, always supporting, always giving me everything that I needed. And I'm still right in the same place with Mike. See, you can't do everything for them. You can't fix them. And honestly, it doesn't matter if you're the world's best mom or the world's worst mom, your kids will figure it out. That's how I look at it. And that was very eye-opening to me to realize that like Mike didn't have the best freaking life. I had a pretty decent childhood and somehow we still came together and raised an amazing son. So when you're thinking, oh, I don't want him to, to have any hard experiences. I don't want him to go through anything. I don't want him to get a scratch or a bruise or bump or whatever. Let him. They're gonna learn. And you can't sit and worry about people because all that's doing is saying how much you distrust them and how much you don't trust their decision making. How interesting is that? To realize that worrying is discrediting the person sitting next to you or whoever you're worried about. It's interesting. Um, yeah. I just, I've been stewing on it since Monday. <laughs> and so it's been, um, it's been something that I've been thinking a lot about and I'm catching now as well. Like I'm just trying to work through it and catch myself doing it. So it's going to take some time, I think, for us to stop worrying per se, especially like I think as a mom or um, also just a trait that I know I got from my mom. My mom worries all the time. I was always worried about everybody. And she's like, wants to make sure everybody's okay. And like, you know, she just takes her mom role very seriously, which I do too. But I realized that a lot of it maybe actually hindered me because she worried too much because she saved me a couple of times that I, maybe she shouldn't have. You know, I mean, I'm grateful for it because it's gotten us to where we are now, but was it the best thing? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to actively really start putting this into action for my life because I'm realizing that worry is not doing any favors to anybody, to my own brain, to my own life, to other people's lives, to their, you know, development and growth, it's not working. And I didn't realize that worry was so um, detrimental to the other person. 
like worrying was for me, you know, like, oh, I worry that Derek's not getting enough socialization. Like, I didn't realize that was discrediting him. I thought that was just for me. Like, oh, like, that's just a mom's worry, you know? But in reality, you're only hindering the person you're worrying about. And so I just got to share that with you guys. You know, that's like new information to me and new information that I'll be working through. And I think that it's something that we can maybe work through together. Or now that you know, I'm sorry, guys, you can't unknow it. Now that you know, you can't unknow it. So next time you say, I'm worried for you, you're going to have a little thing that comes in the back of your head that goes, oh, shoot, I'm not supposed to worry. Ooh. And it's going to come up and you're going to be like, oh, there it is. You're going to spot it. Um, you might not spot it right away, but there's going to be a time where somebody you're having a conversation with somebody and you're going to want to say, I'm worried about you or I worry for you or maybe later on or you're talking to somebody and then later on you're talking to your husband and you go, I'm just really worried for her. And you're going to stop yourself. You're going to go, oh, why don't I trust that she can make the right decisions? You know, say it like, so this is an example. Say I was talking to my sister and she was going through something and I was like, I'm really worried about them. And I was talking later on to Mike, man, I'm just really worried for my sister because she's going through blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to stop myself and I'm going to say, why am I worried about her? She's a smart, capable, educated woman. She can totally deal with this. You know? And so worry and love can't exist at the same time. Okay? So when you're worrying about somebody, you're not loving them. And I know it feels like you are, right? It feels like when I'm worrying about somebody, it's because I love them so much and I just don't want anything to happen to them, right? Like that's, that's basically what we originally thought worry was, is that we just cared about them so much. I just want to protect them. I just love them so much that I'm going to worry about them. But little do you, did we know worry and love actually can't exist at the same time? That loving them actually means, you know what? She's a very capable, strong woman, and I know that she has the tools to get through it. That's love. That's showing love to somebody. Worrying about somebody over here, that's not love. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Whew. So interesting to me. Um, and it's been in my head for like the last two days. I actually almost read it yesterday that I ended up doing Les Brown video. And because I feel like I still needed a day like in my head, um, kind of figuring out how I wanted to talk about it. And um, so I just, but I, today I was just like, we've got to talk about this worry situation. <laughs> I like realized like we have got to work through our worry because also you guys, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of our mental. Like, listen, this is my favorite line. Worrying is fear that hasn't grown up yet. It's a misuse of our imagination. Why are you wasting your imagination on worrying? So if you have the possibilities to create images in your head, why not allow it to be all the positive things that they could have happen? Why is it that we would use our imagination and our creativity to create negative thoughts for them? Like they can't handle it. They're going to go uh, into the hospital because of it, blah, blah, blah. Like that's worry. And that's actually hindering them. And it's a misuse of our imagination. When in reality, we could say, man, you know what? I know she's going through a hard time, but I have faith that she's going to get through it. And she's going to come out on top as a different person and a stronger person after all this. She might have to hit rock bottom a little bit. And it's going to be hard watching her. But I have faith that she can do it. And if she needs me to sit in the water with her for a little bit and just listen, I'll be here for that right? Like if you're going to use your imagination, 
use it to create some kind of positive image rather than worrying and discrediting the situation. Just try it, right? Like, why not? Because now that you've been exposed, again, you guys, you can't know this. Once it's up here, and now that you know, worrying does so much harm to everyone involved, it's gotta stop. needs the mix, right? Now that it's in your mind, now that you've grown and been expanded to this, to this side or to this uh, element, it's in there forever now. Sorry about you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but for real, you guys, um, this is really cool information. And I think, honestly, it can bring so much clarity. It can bring so much clarity to what help and support is, okay? And we need to be supporting people, not fixing people, not helping people, not doing it for them, not worrying. We have to focus on ourselves. How can you be focusing on yourselves when you're spending all your time worrying about so-and-so? Right? That's their job. Their job is to worry about themselves, right? And if they even say, oh, you haven't even called me and you know I'm going through a hard time and you haven't even called me and, and whatever, be like, that's your problem. I've got my own problems. You need to fix your life while I'm fixing my life. I know we can come and have a normal conversation, but I'm not going to be here for just some dump station for you to dump all your problems. And then I'm supposed to just sit here with them. Go get a therapist for that. I'm your friend. I'm your sister. We're supposed to be having a normal conversation, right? I'm not going to sit here and worry about you and your issues. Figure it out. But I bet she'll go figure it out. Right? Be like, stop bitching about it and go figure it out. Sometimes people just need to hear that, right? Like, I can't worry about you. I can't fester my mind worrying about you and your situation because I've got my own situation here. And I think when we just kind of like put our foot down when it comes to guarding our own minds, right? Like we have got to guard our own minds and worry is no longer allowed in our minds, okay? Worry is no longer going to take up any space in your brain and in your thoughts. The moment it comes up, I want you to wipe it out. I want you to acknowledge it and wipe it out. Say, because there's going to be a time where you're going to be like, oh, I'm kind of worried about so-and-so. Or, oh, you know, so-and-so has been all by herself the whole time. I'm kind of worried about her. You don't need to You been okay? <laughs> you don't have to worry. Okay, don't worry about people. If you really want to know how they're doing, call them and ask them. Sit and listen, support, don't fix, don't help, and don't worry. Support, okay? So I'm kind of worrying through, the, or I'm worrying through this. I'm working through this as well. Um, and so as I maybe run into situations or run into like, you know, kind of good examples, I'll just try and share them with you guys. Um, I'll just try and be like, hey, I had this happen and I totally stepped into worrying and I had to consciously kind of pull myself out of it and move on. Uh, or maybe you guys might have a situation after you get off of here or a week down the road or a month down the road, you're gonna be like, holy crap, I was totally worrying. I didn't even realize that that was worry in my body until I, I kind of analyzed it. So, um, Brittany, I'm just reading this comment that people we worry about are the ones that need our love. Absolutely, yes. And, and just like now that we know that worry and love can exist at the same time, it's like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> I've been doing that wrong all this time. I've been worrying about them. When in reality, I should have just been loving them and supporting them and, and just being there for them. 
I didn't need to hinder them. You know, I didn't need to worry about them. I just needed to love them and know that they are capable. I think you guys, um, I know I've said this probably like a million times. If you're one of my coaches, you've heard this, like coaching is believing in people before they believe in themselves. To be honest with you guys. Uh, you know, I think I see a little hand raise thing down here. Yeah, I just wanted to throw it out there too. Like, I feel like I have become less of a worrier um, in the last couple of years. Um, I don't know if it's because my faith. Um, I, we have no control of anything, of anything in this world. Like, we might think we do, we might want to think we do, but we have no control over anything. So, worrying about something is not going to fix anything. It's not going to do anything but maybe stress you out or get you in a bad state of mind. So, like, what I do um, is I pray about it. Like, you know, if I'm going to worry about something I just pray about it and put it in God's hands because it's out of our hands like we have no control over it so why worry you know especially with this little one the past week like I had no control over her sickness as a mom I got answers you better bet your butt I was determined to get some answers for her and help her start feeling better but to sit there and worry and cry about it I had my moment but I sucked it up and I prayed yeah. over her I prayed about the situation and I stayed positive a positive mindset so worrying gets you nowhere at all <laughs> dude I love that that's like the perfect example right now of like worrying like you have like a sick child and you're worried you start to you know, you feel that worry start to arise, right? Like you feel it start to like come and you have this opportunity to be like, okay, am I gonna continue worrying? Am I gonna let that start taking over and let it fester my mind and spiral out of control? Or am I gonna step into faith? Like that is perfect. Like, am I gonna step into faith that, you know what? She is a strong, capable little girl and she is a fighter and she is gonna get through this. It may not be fun. It may take, several days she's going to get through it and you just have to step up into that faith absolutely and like and pray about it absolutely like I, you know what i pray that they're going to figure it out i pray that my baby's going to be okay like praying doesn't even have to be necessarily like god specific it could just be like i just have faith that my daughter is going to get through this you know it doesn't even like maybe you know like God is God is not your thing, but you could just pray either way. You know what I mean? Like I'm praying and I have faith that everything's gonna be fine. And if it's not, we'll figure it out. We're capable human beings of figuring it out. I have survived all the days that have ever been put before me this far. What makes me think we can't figure it out another day? Right. And so I love that to me. I love that, um, that like in the moment analogy, it was like perfect. Um, and it really kind of makes us see too, like how much worry can come into our lives so quickly and how quickly it can be like, oh, I'm so worried about my child. Like she's sick. Da, da, da. And then you're like, wait a minute, worrying isn't going to do anything for her. Right. Other than maybe elevate the situation, elevate the stress. And then she's like, why is mama so stressed? I don't feel good, but why is mama so stressed? Why is she so upset? Why is she, you know, doing all this? And that's only gonna escalate the situation where you could step over here and say, this is what's been handed to me. I have faith that we will figure it out. I have faith that the doctors will take care of her. I have faith that we will be okay. But you can't do both. It, it it can't be both love and worry can't exist at the same time just something to think about definitely something very interesting Brittany I saw your little um, mute come up did you have something to say um yeah I just wanted to say like 
when you worry or you love, like you have different actions from those thoughts. Like if Tennille would have worried about her daughter, she probably wouldn't have got answers. She would have just worried. But like, you know, when you love, you go and do different mm -hmm. things. So just, it's just so powerful like how your thoughts lead to different actions. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because worrying, you know, if, had you been worrying for her, yeah, you might have just like kept her in here. Like, I'm worried about taking her to the hospital because of all the other sick people, you know? And if you were just worried about all of that, then maybe you wouldn't have taken her. And that's exactly what you needed to do was just take her. And, but you were so worried that you hindered the situation even more. And I think worrying, you guys, worrying clouds our decision-making. Like, it makes our decision-making erratic. It makes our decision-making based off of fear, right? So when we're sitting in worry, you're basing your decisions off of fear, okay? And any decision based off of fear, you guys, is most likely not going to be a positive one, right? Um, it, it's most likely not going to be the, the decision we should be making had we been sitting in love, right? Or faith. It's not going to be the same decision making. And like, you know, Brittany, that's perfect. Is like the way you act when you're worrying in your head compared to the way you act when you have faith in your head is totally different and you can't fake it. You can't fake it. You can't be worrying in your head and then pretending to have faith actions. That doesn't work. You have to have faith in your head to have faith actions. You can't lie. The actions are telling. That's actually really important. I love that. Like the actions will tell whether you're sitting in worry or sitting in faith. I actually don't even need to know. I could probably watch your actions and know exactly where you're sitting. Yep. That's interesting. Based off of people's actions, you can know whether they're living a life of faith or a life of worry you will be able to pinpoint it like that now. You're going to see somebody or hear somebody and you're going to go, ooh, somebody's sitting in fear. Ooh, that has fear written all over it. And you're going to recognize it. And it's going to be interesting now to be able to recognize it. Or you're going to see somebody in faith and you're going to go, wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful that she can sit right there regardless of her situation that's beautiful right I mean I even look at it as like um, I was talking to my coach Ashley just yesterday uh, she's eight months pregnant and we were talking about celebrating certain things so she was talking about her pregnancy and I was talking about my post that I had done yesterday and it's so crazy how bitter people are right now you guys, almost every post that I put out that's been positive, I've had somebody say something negative on it. People are so bitter right now of people that are happy. People don't understand. They're like, oh, the life you live, they think I'm living in some like fantasy bubble. Like I don't have problems or like whatever. I'm like, just because I choose happiness and love and faith, doesn't mean I don't have problems, right? Doesn't mean that Derek and I don't like argue. It doesn't mean that my house isn't still a mess. It doesn't mean that we don't still like have to figure out all of our money and, and everything like that. Like just because I'm living happy and, and in love, it doesn't mean I don't still have problems. It just means that I'm gonna just choose happiness regardless of those problems. But it's interesting how quickly I can recognize the people that are sitting in faith and sitting in fear when they comment on my post. A comment sitting in faith. Oh my God, girl, look at your legs. You look so amazing. Look how happy it is. Look at that sun shining. I'm so glad you have an escape while you're down there and that you have somewhere to go and are able to get outside as well. That's a comment sitting in faith. 
Thank you, Nicole, by the way. That was part <laughs> inspired by the comment you made on my post yesterday. <laughs> Here's a comment, living in fear. <laughs> that's just not, that's great that you get to do that, but that's just not reality for me. That's a comment sitting in fear, right? Or jealousy. But you can, it's very telling, right? Instantly. I can see the people that are sitting in faith and love, and I can see the people that are sitting in fear and jealousy. It's so telling. You can pinpoint it like that. Now that you know what it is and you can identify it, you can almost giggle at it. Like, I don't get mad when somebody puts a fear comment on my thing. I look at it as an opportunity to flip them. I look at it as an opportunity to, like, get them on my side or to, like, ex not expose them in a way of, like, oh, look at them. They're so stupid. Not like that. But, like, expose them to themselves, saying, why are you living like that? You're totally capable of doing exactly what I'm doing. You think four years ago when I was living in my uncle's front yard in an RV, I knew that I was going to be living on an island in the Keys? No, I didn't. But there was a moment where I had faith that I would get there. And I started doing everything I could to get there, too. I started actively searching for it and having faith that it would happen. It's just interesting, you guys. Once you realize what it is and how it affects people, or you can read it from other people when it's coming on to you, you have all the superpower now. You have superpowers now. Literally. Powers other people don't possess in you. Like, sorry. Um, and, sure. <laughs> they don't usually like they only bark when they think somebody's at the front door. <laughs> um, so we're going to end on that today. I think that was like some very, very important stuff that we had to work through. And I think that it can really foreshadow a lot of how we're going to start living our lives right now. At least I hope so. I really hope that we can step out of worry and just into faith, right? And, and as we learn, like sometimes I think when you first start doing po uh, personal development and you're like, oh, I'm just supposed to have faith, everything is gonna work out. I'm just supposed to just believe and play in fantasy land over here. Like, yeah, right. You know, I remember I used to think that when I first started doing personal development, I'm like, oh, I'm just supposed to be Thoughts. Just be positive. But as I continue to do personal development, I realize all the hurt that I do with fear and how important faith is to your whole life. Your whole life is determined on whether you have faith or fear. The direction of your life will absolutely be determined if you have faith or fear. And you can even take like an inventory right now, right? Like, is this the life I envisioned or not? Am I in faith or am I in fear? And how has this fear shaped my life? Or how has this faith shaped my life? You can really, really start to analyze everything now and be like, oh, that's happening because I live in fear in that part of my life. Ooh, this, this is actually a really good part of my life because I live in faith here because I love here. You know, now you can really start to analyze things and then you can start to switch it. But I definitely recommend having a conversation with your partner before you just start switching because they're going to be like, who is this woman? What is she doing? What have you done with my wife? Who is this positive faith loving girl? Who are you? <laughs> they're going to be a little like, whoa, 
but you just say, this is the new me. I've spent years of my life living wrong. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to go through that with me, but I just want you to know right now, I'm going to be a different person. I'm going to actively work my ass off to live in love and to live in faith. And I just wanted to let you know, this is where I'm going to be living from now on. You can either support it or get back in your tree. I don't need your help. I don't need you to fix it for me. This is something I'm doing for myself, regardless of what you think, regardless of what you do. This is for me. Right? You don't have to sit there and say, you can't have fear anymore. You can't live in worry anymore because I'm not allowed to live in worry anymore. And if you don't, then I won't. Right? That's what we try to do a lot of times is like we learn something and so we instantly try to project it onto our partners because we're like, well, if I can fix his worry, then it will fix my own worry. That ain't how this happens. Fix your own worry and they will follow suit. Lead from the front. Be willing to step out alone and say, I'm doing this for me regardless of all of you. You guys want to join? That's awesome. If you don't, sorry about you. Peace out. Cause I'm going this way. Right? Mm. <laughs> like this is for you. This is for you. It's a gift to stop worrying. Right? Like imagine worry just being lifted from your body. Worry, gone. Faith, love, brought in. How, do, how good does that feel? You know, like imagine yourself physically allowing worry to just wash out of your body. And then as that washes out and it goes all the way out to your very tippy toes, and then in comes this other wave of love. And it's coming in and it's coming up through your toes and it comes up through your body and you just feel beautiful, right? Like, does it, doesn't love and faith feel so much better in your body than worry and fear? Like you have to recognize that feeling in your chest and your soul and your, in your gut that feels so much better. It feels so much more comforting to know that I live in faith and love rather than fear and worry. It feels so much better in my body. I hope the same thing's for you too. Okay? Woo, buddy. That's some good work today. <laughs> ah, I feel good about that. I love it. And I had to share. I had to share. You guys, remember, personal development is not a secret. Stop keeping it to yourself. Okay. When I learn something, you guys learn something. I refuse to keep it as a secret to myself. Like I need to know more than you guys. The moment I learn something, I share it. Right. Because it's not a secret that only I should know. I shouldn't be the only one knowing that worry doesn't serve a purpose in your body. You need to know that too. Now, who do you need to tell about it? Right. I'm sure you can think of a few people right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> so spread the love, spread the faith, and don't let anybody tell you you can't live in your little happy zone because you sure can. You sure can. Just like they can choose to live in their little hole of terror, you can live in your house of gold. Okay. Yes, you can. Yes, I can. You guys ever see that professor? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> we watched it like a lot. Like if you ever watched that movie from like the nineties, we watched it the other day, and it just brought back like all of these like childhood memories of watching the Nutty Professor when I was like ten. Oh gosh, it was so funny. <laughs> all right. Oh shoot, I was gonna take a picture, but Derek has my phone. Um, I think Samuel had gotten a picture of all of us, so I'll just share hers. So, all right, ladies, 
Thank you guys so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys got a little something worked out here and um, we'll just continue tomorrow. Happy 70s day. <laughs> All right, ladies, have a good day. Bye.